know, you think yeah. about that, you know, it's like tennis, you know, the ball's coming at you a gazillion miles an hour, but yet the stationary ball that's on the ground and you're holding the club the same way you did at the last swing, right? right? right. It's just yeah. like, oh, I, but I did, I will tell you the, this last time playing, I did use a club that I normally don't use and I don't know much about it, but it was in the set of clubs that Powerboat gave me. And it's a 56 degree club. It just changed my whole like chipping game. It pops it up nice and high in the air. Doesn't take it, you know, because I'm still trying to figure out the power behind the swing, especially when you get closer to the hole, right? Where you're not quite on the green, you're right off the green. And, you know, the pitching wedge I had tried it, you know, several times, obviously, because that's usually what you use. But I always tend to hit that too hard and then it goes too far. And so that really ticks me off. So then my dad was trying, he had like a 52 degree wedge. And I was like, oh, I've got this weird 56 degree wedge. So let me try that. Oh my gosh, it was perfect. Cause it popped yep. it up just enough, but didn't add a lot of distance. And that's exactly yep. what I needed. So, you know, 95% of this game is knowing what club to use in what stage of the game. And exactly. I'm not sure that there's a great equation out there, but if somebody has like <laughs> has a chart. <laughs> <laughs> you have to do the chart because how far you hit it is going to be totally different than how far Neil hits it. Yours will be farther. <laughs> now, well, you know what? I did win the longest drive at a, yeah, a, golf, a, a golf championship right. last year. My husband still doesn't believe me, but <laughs> because he wasn't there, but I did uh -huh. hit the longest drive and I was pretty daggone proud of that. But yeah. I was playing with a lot of seniors, but hey, you know, yeah, that's, we that's all okay. came from the that's same okay. team. I have several Miss America sisters that play golf. Kyleen Barker, who is a great golfer. She golfs a ton. Kira uh, Kerstanza Dixon, she actually is an anchor on the Golf Channel. She was born playing golf. So she right. is about as close to a golf pro without being a golf pro, right. certainly. And she just took on that position uh, not too long ago. And she helps out with the Tiger Woods Foundation. So she has done an outstanding job. I think I would be scared to play with her. I would be like the fifth wheel on her team. I'd be like, you know, Kira, I'm here for your entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> Not a problem. Golf is fun. You meet great people and you get entertained. Like we're going to entertain Heather with a six pack. We come right back. Kids are going back to school soon, which means you'll have a chance to soak up summer with some you time. And how better to do that than with a cold Arnold Palmer spiked. Hey, it's Neil Michaels. Just picture yourself with that Arnold Palmer spiked at the pool or at the beach. It's the classic taste of iced tea and lemonade with 5% ABV. Made with real juice and brewed teas for a smooth flavor that's as easy going as listening to the sounds of the waves. Wherever you go, remember to take Arnold Palmer spiked with you. For classic refreshment that tastes like the feeling of your toes in the sand, nothing beats Arnold Palmer spiked. It's the perfect balance of brewed teas and real juice, now with 5% ABV. Find Arnold Palmer Spiked in a store near you at arnoldpalmerspike.com slash approach, or search for it on Drizzly and Instacart. That's arnoldpalmerspike.com slash approach. 2021 Hornell Brewing Company, Memphis, Tennessee, malt beverage with natural flavor, celebrate responsibly. Hey, let's talk a little about daily fantasy sports here. See, I love to play, but I haven't had a lot of success, and it's been a little frustrating. Apparently, I'm not the only one, because 85% of the people who play lose. So when we started talking with Stat Hero about advertising here in the show, I asked what makes Stat Hero different. The answer made me a believer. See, Stat Hero shows you their lineups and dares you to beat them. It's you versus the house in a head-to-head -head fantasy matchup. Winner take all. No one else does that. Since I signed up back in late May, I've won about as much as I've lost, which is only because there are three Dodgers hitters that always seem to screw up my stats. Seriously, this is the most fun I've ever had playing DFS. So come on and join me. Go to stathero.com slash approach, sign up for free, and right now you can get three times back on your first play. They're giving you a 300% match. That's unheard of. Go to stathero.com slash approach. Stathero.com slash approach. We are back. It is the approach shot. It is that time for the six pack. It is. 
that dramatic this number. Six pack is once again brought to you by Arnold Palmer Spiked for a retailer near you. Apparently, you need many retailers near you in Kentucky because John always complains he can't find one. Go to arnoldpalmerspike.com slash approach. See, the approach part gives us the credit, and we get credit for that. So yeah. arnoldpalmerspike.com slash approach. Heather, you ready? We're putting you on the hot seat. Uh-oh, I, I hope so. Do I get to pass on any of these if I don't know them? <laughs> no, it's a hot seat, not a warm seat. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we'll see. Question number one, in your opinion, which golfer has had the greatest impact on the game? Oh, wow. Um, You know, I know it's going to be probably sound very pedestrian because of my age, but I will tell you, I think Tiger Woods probably for a younger generation. I watched the impact he had on my younger brother in learning how to play golf. And he was Jameson's greatest inspiration in getting out on the golf course um, especially in a small town like Maysville and gave him a lot of hopes and dreams. So I think I'm going to go with probably what the average um, answer would be. And I would say Tiger Woods. I, I think that is an excellent answer, especially considering there was some inspiration in the family. All right. We're warming you up. Question two. Think about this. When you play, what's your favorite golf word or golf phrase? Four. <laughs> <laughs> It actually might be the least favorite for the people in front of you. <laughs> I should say that's the most, that might be the most common. Uh, certainly when you think of phrase, hole in one is never in my vocabulary because I've no. never had that really happen. But uh, yeah, I don't know if I have one singular phrase, but uh, I haven't had to use four very often. But when you do play on golf courses where houses, you know, are yeah. certainly, you just try not to slice the ball toward the house. So, yeah, pivot. And if you yell for, the house almost never ducks. <laughs> yeah, that is exactly right. But the people who are out at the house, maybe grilling out, might. <laughs> right. I think my least favorite phrase is, sorry about your window. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you've seen the, uh, the video. There's a guy who lives on a uh, golf course. And when people hit into his yard and he's there to see it, he grabs the ball, puts it next to him, and lies down as if he's <laughs> unconscious. <laughs> really funny when you live close to a golf course. My parents said that they were just sitting out in their backyard the other day, and they've never, like, they've had some hit their house, but they happen to have some trees that also help buffer. But this particular golf ball, like, came flying by their shins. They were, like, sitting on one of the swings out back and my mom was like, wow, that would have hit my leg. I said, mom, I think it's kind of dangerous sitting out there. <laughs> my dad and Steven have a competition going, right? So dad lives on a golf course. We live across from one. So every night my husband walks one of our dogs over at Cherokee golf course and they collect balls, both of them. So every heavy box that's in my house or in the basement, you can guarantee if you open it, there's golf balls. And so now they have a competition about the favorite golf balls. And like dad will text me a picture. Ooh, look at the golf ball I found. And look at the logo on this. And so that, oh, it's just, it's starting to get insane. I've never played in Maysville, but tell your husband, I want my balls back. <laughs> there you go. I'll tell All him right, that, but I don't know if he'll have a question about that. <laughs> All right, back on, back on the six. Okay, sorry. Question. All right, back on That's all right. It's all right. We, it's okay if we defer. In which of your many areas of interest would you like for your daughters to get involved? Well, so my daughters are involved in just about everything that I do and our family does as a whole. They've always been involved in veterans initiatives. Uh, they help out with Floyd's Fork. We even do, I'm going to preface this by saying that we don't physically do the free prostate cancer screenings as far as I'm not going to screen your prostate if you come to our prostate cancer screenings, but they help to sign men up for free prostate cancer screenings. Um, they help out the Rosemary Clooney Museum with us. But I will say, again, not to be so pedestrian in my answer, but if there's one thing I would like for them to do in the future to be involved, I would love for them to start playing golf. You know, it's interesting. One plays softball, the other played field hockey and ran cross country. But living across from a golf course, and even being a tennis player, they didn't play tennis or golf. I sat down with them the other night and I said, ladies, you know, as you grow, you need to learn how to play golf. It's going to be something that 
you know, you don't have to be hugely proficient in. It's not like you're going to go be in the PGA or anything like that um, or win a tournament. But just for, you know, social events, uh, community interaction as you grow and become business leaders or involved in the business community or philanthropic community. I said learning and knowing how to play golf will benefit you greatly. And it's a game that you can play the rest of your life. Here, here. Truer words. Never we, we talk all the time about how great it is for philanthropy, for business, that taking four hours to go play golf someplace will establish you a relationship with people that you would not normally be able to do. So that's right. And it's a game that also involves you putting your cell phone down. So, you know, right. there's lower interaction with that device and more interaction with a human, which is right. better. Again, here, here. Question four. This one's a toughie. I need Uh-oh. you to put your thinking cap on here. Since you have a degree and a master's in design and architecture, looking at today's golf styles, we'll put architecture aside for a minute, looking at today's golf styles, how would you improve on the way a lot of these guys look on the PGA Tour? <laughs> How they look, certainly. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, you know, the women tend to look a little better than the men. They look great. Uh, I was, right. The men look like shrubs. <laughs> boosted their fashion. Um, no, I think the guys look pretty good. You know, I love uh, I love golf fashion, which I think is really important if you're going to play a particular sport to actually look like you. Uh, know how to play the particular sport. In fact, I often say it's just as important to look good playing the sport as it is to be good (laughs) playing the sport. (laughs) No doubt about it. I think the guys do well. In fact, I think that across the spectrum, whether you're even talking golf or not, even tennis, you know, fashion and the quality of fashion because of new uh, synthetic fibers that can wick away moisture and provide much more protection from the sun have really um, gone above and beyond where I ever thought they would be. So I think that it, that has added a lot. Um, I do question though, I've seen a lot of women wearing long sleeves on the golf course. I don't know that I could do that. I probably should do that just to protect my skin a bit more from the sun. So I find that that trend for women is a little confusing for me, but I do understand why they do it. It's just for me, for someone who's not out on the golf course all the time, I like to get a little bit more of that vitamin D in my skin. But for some, you know, people like them that are, I mean, that's their life, right? It's mm-hmm. uh, kind of like farmers when they're out there. I mean, they're usually wearing long sleeves on the tractors because they're getting so much more exposure. I feel like that was a warm answer, not a hot answer. Not a hot, I don't know if there's I, really I a hot you, answer, I, though. I need you to think about men's fashions and and. Like, do we put the berets back on? Do we put knickers back on? Give me something, Heather. You got a degree, man. Do I think the men should wear Speedos out there to play golf? (laughs) (laughs) Now you took it in a direction I was hoping we wouldn't do. So I'm going to move on to question five. (laughs) You you teed it up. (laughs) Yeah, you're right. I did. (laughs) She beat me. Okay, question five. Hollywood called. They'd like to cast you in your own golf movie. In what time period would you like it to be? And who plays Heather? Oh, my goodness. Well, that I don't even know. How do I answer that? So I I love Halle Berry. Mm-hmm. And she also is a former pageant girl. So, you know, I think she would sort of. Connection connection and kind of get my personality. Mm-hmm. I think that if I were to star in a golf movie, I would like to maybe in the like the 20s and 30s ish, because I think that that was a women's oddly enough, sort of a women's empowerment sort of start. Of course, we had just gotten the right to vote right in like 1919. Mm-hmm. And I think that women's golf really kind of started taking off then. And I love the fashion. Sure certainly of the time. So that's where you talk about that traditional with like the beret and the knickers. And um, so I think that would be a fun period. That, that is an A answer right there. I love that. There's something about how golf became this other thing at that point. It it moved out. It had some fashion. It had, 
was recognized as a sport. And I love the Halle Berry. Excellent answer. Well yeah. done. Awesome. Thank yeah. you. Question six. Now, 